Hey, how you doing everybody? So today we're going to be making traditional South African biltong. I've got some chilli or some dried chilies from last season. Uh, the end of the dried chilies, the last few bits I've got. So I want to use them for something. And I also want to make some biltong because it's been, uh, it's been a few months since I've had some. So today we're going to make the traditional biltong. Um, all you're going to need, some pickling vinegar. Uh, that's malted. You can use, you can use red wine vinegar, white wine vinegar. It's down to personal choice and taste. Need some Lee Perrin's Worcestershire sauce. Got my spices. Um, I'll find the link of where I bought these from, but it's a Kalahari mix. It's kind of the traditional mix. Um, so we've got two of those because I'm going to do two types. Because one I'm going to infuse with a chili and one I'm going to keep playing for the people that don't like um, their spice. Um, and then obviously a bit of beef. Now you want to use top side or silver side. Uh, I was looking for silver side, didn't have any in the butcher, but that's a nice bit of top side. Uh, entirely up to you how much fat you want to keep on it. Some people like a lot of fat in their biltong. Um, some people don't like any. Uh, you can either trim that off. I'm going to leave a little bit of it on because it is quite nice to have a little bit in there. Um, uh, and that's it. That's all you need. Uh, and then I'll show you the dryer or the biltong dryer separately in a minute. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get your biltong and chop it up into nice even strips. You want to go down with the grain as well. You don't want to be chopping across. And you always want to be using a reasonably sharp knife to cut through, you're looking for sort of slices that are about one to two centimeters thick. Uh, the thicker you make it, the longer it'll take to dry, uh, pure and simple. So it's, it's different to beef jerky and, and some other recipes I've seen where it's cut as thin as possible. Uh, you wanna have it a little bit thicker because uh, it's obviously much nicer. Uh, and this isn't to be confused with beef jerky, beef jerky. Uh, I'm sorry to all my American followers and friends, but beef jerky is nothing like biltong um, at all. Beef jerky is quite a sweet barbecue flavour, uh, and biltong's got a more sort of deeper, sort of spicier flavour. And you can use any spices you want. Uh, the core spices, coriander is quite a quite a, a core spice of biltong. Salt, black pepper, um, and that's pretty much it. And you can buy. You can buy these mixes online. Um, there's plenty of shops and websites here in the UK where you can buy some uh, Biltong Spice already mixed, which I've got there. And I bought that a couple of years ago. Um, maybe a year or so ago I bought it, so it lasts pretty well. Depends how much Biltong you make, to be honest. Um, or you can make your own. So there's plenty of places you can buy. You can buy it online. Okay, so you chop the meat, uh, you've got your strips. Um, that's not a bad amount, actually, from a, from a decent joint of beef. Uh, I've trimmed off some of the bits I didn't want in there, some of the ones that had a bit too much fat on. Uh, but I have kept some with some fat on, because um, I say some of it is nice. Um, so, next step is to, you need two plastic containers. Now, I've already mixed the, uh, it was about 200, 250 mils of the vinegar, 50 mils of the Worcestershire sauce. Um, now the first thing you want to do is you want to, we're going to be layering it, so it's going to marinate overnight, probably 24, 48 hours. So you want to just put a little bit of the vinegar in the bottom. Uh, lay some of your, start laying some of your meat in. In fact, actually what we are going to do is we're going to put some spice in the bottom as well. So we'll sprinkle a bit of spice on the bottom there as well. I mean, it doesn't really matter to be fair because you're going to mix it up and it's going to be shaking around uh, quite a lot over the next 24 hours. So we'll put some of this in there. Again, it doesn't matter if it's touching, it's all going to be mixed together anyway. And then after that, another layer of vinegar. And the more you do this, the more you'll start to experiment with sort of the quantities in that, how much, depends on the flavour you want, whether you want it strong. I think the first batch I did, I left for, I think I left it for three days and it was uh, far too vinegary for me. Um, so a day, normally 24 hours is probably the amount of time that I'll let this marinade for. You can normally tell by looking at the meat as well. Uh, it should all be nice and brown and it should have absorbed all the salt and the spices. And then we repeat the process. Uh, 
There, now we're just going to give that a good mix up so it's all covered. Uh, you can wear gloves for this, and if you don't like touching meat, then I suggest you do. But I think it's quite nice to get your hands in there. And the smell is amazing. The spices, it just takes... I grew up in South Africa, so this is uh, this is the dish I grew up with. And they don't sell it, or they do sell it in the UK, but it's quite expensive. Um, it's much cheaper to make your own. Um, and it's one of those things that most people you give it to to try absolutely love it. Um, and it's one of those things you just can't get very easily here, so that's why I decided to start making my own. Actually, to be fair, it tastes... Uh, better than the, than the bought stuff. Um, there are a ton of places you can go and buy There's some butchers will sell biltong. If you can find a butcher that's South African, he'll normally be making his own biltong. Uh, and there's a ton of different recipes out there for biltong uh, if you look online. Um, but again, when you start doing this, just start doing it yourself uh, and playing around with your own, own sort of uh, flavors. Okay, so that's mixed up now. And that's enough. So we're just gonna cover that up. And that will then go in the fridge for probably 24 hours. Uh, and what you want to do is check it. Not that it's going to do anything, but maybe every two or three hours, you want to give it a shake, get your hands back in there, mix it all around so that it makes sure everything gets covered, everything marinates nicely. Um, and that will go in the fridge, like I say, now for overnight. And then we'll get ready to uh, dry it out tomorrow. So onto the chili one. Now, the chili spice I'm going to use, I'm going to do exactly the same. Now, this spice is from last year's crop. It was ghost chilies. Uh, there's some Trinidad Scorpion chocolates uh, in there. There are some Scotch bonnets and I think just some normal, uh, quite mild bird's eyes uh, and some normal red chilies. So it's a bit of a mix, but it's what I got left over from last year that we haven't used yet. Um, but hopefully it won't be long until we uh, have some have our new crop ready but it is snowing here in the UK today so it may be a few weeks yet uh, now quantity wise I have no idea so this is going to be a see how it goes kind of recipe um, uh, hopefully, hopefully it won't be too bad but uh, we like our spices in this house so we'll give that a mix and may even be one reaper in here as well. Because I only had one of my plant last year and I don't remember actually cooking with it. I've got a feeling I dried it out with everything else and put it in here. So we'll find out, we'll soon see. Okay, put a bit of that in there. Let's get our meat in. All of it, so we won't be layering this one. Just put a bit more vinegar in. Now, the other, there's another recipe which is similar to biltong, which you can find. It's called uh, druvos or drivos, which is basically dry sausage in South African. Um, it's slightly different to biltong. It is actually a sausage texture that's been dried rather than actually um, sort of the original meat, um, and it does tend to be a lot drier than biltong, um, but that's another South African favorite. So if you like biltong, uh, try and find some druvos. Uh, again, depends where you get it from. If you get it from the right place, it can be lovely. If you get it from the wrong place, well, it doesn't do it justice. Okay, get the hands in there. Now this is one of the recipes I wanted to try with my chilies quite a while, because I think it lends itself to, to heat. You can, or you can buy chili biltong, but um, not to the not to the level that we want it. Kind of your uh, main street chili built on, so it's a little bit tepid for my liking. Um, but I know a lot of people like like a bit of spice. And it's actually quite salty as well. So when you eat built on, you know generally you'd be having it with a nice cold one or whatever your drink of choice is. All right. Now because there's not an awful lot of meat in here, it's not full up, um, and I've cut the strips quite thin, uh, I may not marinate it for a full 24 hours, I may check it in the morning and just see what it's like, uh, I may decide to hang it a little bit early, 
it is one of those things you've just got to try it and you know, suck it and see sometimes. Um, or just go by how you feel. Uh, you can tell, you'll be able to tell if it's marinated. Right, so that's the chilli one. So I might just put a few more spices on top. I'm going to see some chilli with the... Oh, right, so that's it. Right, so we'll now leave those now. Like I said, I'll come back every couple of hours uh, and just redo this. Um, I probably won't film those because it will be quite dull. But we're going to put these in the fridge. I'm going to show this time tomorrow. I'll show you how we dry it. Um, and I'll also show you the box that I've made this year to dry my build on. So there we go. So, see you in 24 hours. Okay, so here we go. It's been marinating now for about about 12 hours. I've just uh, tossed it around a bit, mixed it up. I've done it about three times probably since I put it in there. That's the chilli one. That's the normal one. So you see all the meat's all nice and dark. So we'll give it another probably, I don't know, eight, eight or nine hours, probably the end of the day. And then I'll uh, take it out and dry it off and we'll start to hang it. Okay, so here we are. So 24 hours later, uh, it's been marinated now for 24 hours. Um, I've sort of done this a few times just to mix it up, and it's all pretty, it's all covered properly. It smells lovely. This is the uh, non chilli one. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to dry it off, or just dab it dry, um, and then we're going to put some hooks and some string through the top of it, so it's going to hang from that. You can buy meat hooks to hang it, but they're like 15 quid for 40 it's ridiculous so i just use uh string i hang mine from string put a hole in the top and hang it from the string um it works just as well so we're going to now just dry these off and to do that clean tea towel uh you can use dishcloth paper towel for this but we don't use paper towels in this house in the kitchen so a clean tea towel will do and all you want to really do is try and get some of that moisture out so that it takes, uh, so it won't take so long to dry. Obviously, it's dripping; it'll make a mess in the box as well. So I'm going to try and get as much of this moisture out as well. You can actually squeeze it out if you want to first, but uh, again, it's what works for you. So I'll just dab that down a bit. Now, what you can do at the end, again, it's down to taste. You can actually sprinkle some more. Coriander over the top of it, coriander seeds, which a lot of people do. Um, or you can just drizzle over a bit more of the spice, uh, which is what I'm going to do. And that is it. So what we'll do now is we will start to thread these and get them ready for hanging. And then I'll show you uh, where they're going to dry for the next four or five days um, until they're ready to eat. Okay, so here we go, uh, last bit. So it's all been hung. And it's in the dry box now. Um, now you can buy, if you want to buy Biltong, you can buy them online, Biltong drying boxes. Um, but I made this obviously to dry chilies as well. Uh, it's quite simple, you've got two light bulbs in the bottom. You've got a fan at the top that sort of pulls the air through. And you've obviously got two holes, one on either side, just to keep the air circulating. Uh, and obviously it's mesh over so the flies can't get in and it's hung um, so nothing's touching so it's not touching the sides and none of the meat's touching each other uh, and that is it and what we'll do now is leave that for probably three or four days that's what the box looks like from the outside uh, I made one last year but it was probably half the size and it wasn't big enough so I made a new one a couple of days ago and it'll sit in there now for three or four days and we'll check back uh, probably in a couple of days just to see uh, how the smaller pieces are doing. Okay, so here we go. So uh, two days later, I mean it's Friday, Friday early evening, late afternoon. And I've just tried some, so it's been drying now for two days in here. And I think it's ready. I've just cut uh, a couple of testers up to see. Uh, and so I think it's ready. So what we'll do now is we'll take this out. And we'll see what we've got. 
Okay, so here we are. So the stuff on the right is the chili infused biltong or chili spice biltong with the Trinidad, uh, sorry, Trinidad, Carolina Reaper, Scotch Bonnet, put uh, and some red chilies and the one on the left here is just just the normal one. So I think I've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, I've cut up three. So about twenty sticks there. So that's not bad. It's not a bad little uh Hall. I think the beef sized uh, joint I bought was uh, 15 or 16 pound from a from a local butcher. So uh, yeah, so that's good. And that'll last well probably in this house a couple a week or so. But um, yeah, there we go. So if you've got any questions or any comments, uh, anything you want to know, um, drop it in the comment section below. Uh, if you like it, give it a like. Uh, and so have a go doing it yourself.